Good morning. Mornings are really, really hard for me. No matter how much sleep I get, I am still really tired in the morning. The first thing I do since I have tracheostomy tube and am attached to a ventilator is I run a nebulizer here. I fill it up with saline. I do this because my lungs have a lot of mucus in them from overnight. So I need to get rid of this mucus and get just get it loose and moving because if not, it is really a struggle for me to breathe for the rest of the day. So let me show you how I set up my nebulizer. The first thing I do is I get uh, five milliliters of saline and I put it inside the nebulizer cup. So here we go. Once I have the saline in the nebulizer cup, I put this top on, I attach it to my ventilator. Like that. And then I go and turn on my nebulizer. The nebulizer will take about 30 minutes for it to run. In the meantime, I am really, really tired. So I'm going to use my syringe to inflate the cuff on my tracheostomy tube. This allows me to receive full ventilatory support from my ventilator. And I'm going to take a 30, a 30 minute nap. <laughs> so we'll see you in a little bit. Bye. Okay, it has been 30 minutes. My nebulizer cup is empty. I'm going to turn off the nebulizer. With the nebulizer turned off, I'm going to disconnect this. The next thing I do is I get ready for the day. I have a medical condition called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which is abbreviated as POTS. With this medical condition, my heart races really fast, especially in the morning. For this reason, I need to take a medicine called a beta blocker, which helps slow down my heart rate. So I need to take that. And the other thing is I always, always have water with me, even here in bed. <laughs> That's because I get frequently dehydrated and I need to keep hydrated with having POTS. So let me take my pill. It takes about a half an hour for the beta blocker to start working and to help calm down my heart rate. In the meantime, I need to put on compression stockings. Here are my compression stockings. I wear those because blood pools in my feet and in my legs. This is due to POTS, so I need to put those on to help keep blood in circulation. So this is a rated G video. I am not going to show you how I put on my compression stockings, but let's just imagine and I'll be right back. It always really tires me out putting on the com compression stockings. They are very, very tight and just make me really, really tired. I need to wait 30 minutes for that beta blocker to start working and that will help calm down my heart rate. In the meantime, I am going to study. I'm going to read something, maybe read the Bible, maybe pray. I'm not really sure, haven't really decided that far, but I will see you in about 30 minutes. Bye.
It has been about 30 minutes and my heart rate is so much slower. I know the beta blocker is working when my breathing is not ragged and it doesn't feel like my my heart is just beating out of control. So now that my beta blocker is working, I need to finally get out of bed for the morning. I'm going to head to my bathroom and brush my teeth. So I will see you over in the bathroom. Bye. Hello, welcome to the bathroom. So exciting. Okay, the next thing I do is brush my teeth. Let me explain something to you. Whenever people see my, my toothpaste container, which looks like this, they say, oh, you brush your teeth with garlic. Actually, it's not. It's actually a combination of coconut oil, baking soda, uh, peppermint oil, and cinnamon oil. I mix it all together and make my own toothpaste. I don't like regular toothpaste. Regular toothpaste is really harsh on my teeth. Also, I don't like all the chemicals. I'm going to tell you a secret. I have not been to the dentist since 2012. It's been a long time. And you think, why has it been such a long time? The reason for this is the chemicals they use at the dentist office it makes me really, really sick. So I did a lot of research into dental and, and teeth care. And I found out that using baking soda and um, coconut oil and peppermint oil and um, cinnamon oil is actually really good. It has a lot of antibacterial uh, effects and everything. So I've been doing that. My teeth have not hurt. I have not been to the dentist and people are a little shocked with that. And they're like, you probably have so many cavities. Maybe, I don't know, my teeth look okay though, right? Yes, they do. The other thing I use is an electric toothbrush because A, I'm very, very lazy. It's, it takes a lot of energy to brush your teeth. <laughs> And also because electric toothbrushes tend to do a better job of cleaning your teeth. Um, when I travel, I don't travel with an electric toothbrush. I'd usually use a regular toothbrush and I can feel my teeth are all gritty. They're really disgusting. And so when I get back home, I'm like, oh, so happy for this electric toothbrush. And I just noticed, I think I need a new, new, these, these heads just come off. I think I need a new head. It looks a little, uh, looks a little rough. Mm, things to do. But not now because we need to get going and this is not about how to change the head of your toothbrush. <laughs> so what do I do? I just get a little bit of uh, the goo on there. Not a lot because this stuff, like that's all I get is just a tiny little bit. And then I put it in here and bye. I'm going to brush my teeth. Mm. Okay. I got spit. Bye. <laughs> okay, I am done brushing my teeth. The other thing I need to do is I need to brush my mouth splint. I have a medical condition called TMJD, temporal mandibular joint disorder. It affects this joint. Um, I have a lot of issues with my joints because I have another condition called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. With that, my connective tissue is very loose and it makes my joints very loose. And one of those joints affected is this joint right here. My mouth will slide out of place and these, these ligaments get very, very stressed over the day. So I wear this mouth splint. I wear it at night and I actually took it out before starting this video because I struggle with talking and then I put this in and then I, go, and then I can't really talk. <laughs> and then I can't really talk. So, you know, I take this out to make it easier to understand me. So I need to go brush this and I just use again my electric toothbrush. And I'm not going to show you that because I just got toothpaste all over my computer the last time. <sighs> I don't always think things through. Eh, whatever. So I got to go brush this and I'll be right back. I am all done brushing my mouth splint. Now it is time to go to the bathroom, but I'm not going to show you that because yeah, too much, too much. Hmm, just imagine. <laughs>
What does it look like when you go to the bathroom? Hmm, pretty much the same as when I go to the bathroom. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm going to move to the kitchen to make some tea. I'm not gonna show you me moving to the kitchen because I have to take my, my computer right here and I gotta move my ventilator, which is right here. And I have to move myself and one of us is going to fall and I have a feeling it's gonna be this computer and then that would be the end of my YouTube channel. <laughs> So I am not going to do that. So just imagine me going to the kitchen. Ah, it's so exciting. We'll see you in a little bit. Bye. Welcome to our kitchen area. The next thing I'm going to do is make some tea. First of all, I have my beautiful cup. Ah, it's my favorite, Anne of Green Gables. And I just use loose, loose leaf tea. Here we go. It is Irish breakfast tea. You might think, wow, you must like Irish breakfast tea. No, not really. It was just the cheapest thing when I was buying loose leaf tea. I went through the list and went, oh, Irish breakfast tea. Hmm, okay, I guess that's what I'm drinking. <laughs> I drink loose leaf tea because it is substantially cheaper than buying the little tea bags. The tea bags are very expensive and loose leaf tea is very cheap. Tea bags are about 20 cents a cup for tea and loose leaf tea is about two cents. Two cents. And since I am a cheap MB, don't have a lot of money, we drink loose leaf tea. The other thing I do not do is I do not put it into anything. I'm just going to pour it straight into the cup because again, those little bags that or whatever containers that you use to put to steep the tea, yeah, those cost money and I don't feel like wasting money. I have to tell you a tragedy. I used to have more than one cup, but unfortunately I dropped the cup. Yes, with mitochondrial disease, my hands often shake. And I have problems with my muscles. And so I'm always very cautious whenever I have a cup in my hand to be very, very careful that I keep it like this and don't drop it and don't drop it. Well, the other day I had a cup in my hand and I let go of this hand to just put it down onto the counter. That did not go well. I only had about that much more to go to the counter and somehow something happened and the cup kind of slammed to the counter. It did some damage. I lost the handle. It broke into five pieces and then it also chipped the top of the cup. So now I'm down to one cup and I'm thinking, should I keep the broken cup? Because it's not too terribly broken. I can still drink from it from one side or do I just get rid of it? And mind you, that cup was free because again, I don't spend money on things. <laughs> So now I'm waiting for somebody, somebody to be like, hey, we got a free cup, do you want it? And I'll be like, yes, please. And who knows, strange things happen and things appear on my doorstep, so I never know. So if I get a new cup, I'll be really happy. And if someone gives me their used cup, I'll be really happy. And if I have to use the old cup that's broken, I still will be really happy. So let's get going to make the tea. Here we go. My tea is now steeping. I'm going to let that sit for a while, about an hour, because I do not like hot beverages or hot food, and I don't even th like things warm. I have a lot of sensitivities with my mouth and with my tongue. I get blisters really easily, and so I need food and drink to be room temperature. I can eat and drink things that are cold, but if they are hot or even warm, <laughs> I get blisters on my mouth. I'm not sure if that's mitochondrial disease or just some other weird thing that I have, but people make fun of me. Many years ago, I was at a conference. We got served food and it was really hot. And I remember I put a little bit in, I was like, oh, oh, oh it's really hot. 
So I had to wait a half an hour, and people made fun of me because they're like, "Oh, you're such a waste!" Blah blah blah. It's not that hot. See, they had all their food gone before I could eat my food. So finally, I was like, "Fine, I'll eat the you know eat the warm hot food." So I put food into my mouth, and I got just tons of blisters. And I actually showed them. I'm like, "Look, look, look!" Uh. And they could not believe my mouth was full of blisters and sores. And they said the food is not that hot. Well, it was for my mouth. So with that said, I never eat or drink hot things or even warm things. They have to be room temperature or cold. So I am going to go to bed because I am tired, and that is just a fact of life with mitochondrial disease. And yeah. I'm gonna go to sleep for a little bit and wait for my tea to cool. And once it is cooled, I'm gonna get back up and drink it. So we'll see you in a little bit. Bye. As I was gathering everything up to go to bed, I realized I forgot one thing. I use TPN and I need to take this TPN out of the refrigerator to allow it to warm up to room temperature. And I need to do that. Um, before I go to bed because otherwise the TPN will be cold and when I infuse it, it might crack my IV line. So I don't want that. So I am grabbing my bag of TPN, going to be setting this out, letting it warm up as I take an hour nap and as I allow my tea to cool off. And then I'll be back in a little bit. So we'll see you in about an hour. Bye. Hello. It has been an hour. Let me tell you, as much sleep as I get, I still never feel refreshed. I am still constantly tired. So although I feel a little bit better than I did before, I am by no means bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. No, but my hair is a mess. We'll get to that in a bit. But first off, I really should probably change because I'm still in my pajamas. Hmm. My wardrobe is really simple. I usually wear a shirt and most often it is a celebrity shirt. And no, I'm not doing advertisements for celebrity. It is just because my mom has gone on a couple cruises and she loves to play the games. And whenever she plays games, there are prizes. So she's won hats and she's won shirts. I have, a, I believe, seven celebrity shirts. And let me tell you, they are free, they are nice, so they are part of my wardrobe. And I pretty much wear a celebrity shirt almost every single day of the every single day of the week. That's what I wanted to say. Mm. Because what can I say? I'm cheap, they're free, and that's just my life. <laughs> I like to save nicer shirts for when I leave the house. So I don't often leave the house in a celebrity t-shirt. But since I'm just going to be spending my day in bed most of the time, why not wear a free shirt? <laughs> the other thing I wear over this shirt is a sweatshirt. If you see any of my videos, you will probably have seen this sweatshirt before. Look, it's Epcot. This is a very old sweatshirt. My dad had that and he bought it many, 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 many years ago. And he had the shirt and sweatshirt and he wasn't wearing it anymore. And so he says, oh, do you want to wear this sweatshirt? I'm like, I do because I don't have any sweatshirts anymore. Mm, they all wore out. And so I was without a sweatshirt. And I get really cold because I have dysautonomia or POTS, um, which I talked about before, the postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. And I'm constantly cold. That's why I got long sleeves on right now. <laughs> I'm cold all the time, so it doesn't matter winter, summer, spring, fall. I am always wearing long sleeves, and people think I'm a little bit strange. But even in the hot summertime, I still wear long sleeves because I can't tolerate going from a very cold environment to a very hot environment. My skin just doesn't tolerate it, but I found if I wear a jacket or long sleeves, I do much better that my body is not so um, so uh, stressed out by the temperature changes. And I think also because just with the long sleeves, it keeps the temperature a little bit more stable on my skin. The next thing I wear are pajama bottoms. So these are my pajama bottoms right here. Ooh, aren't they fabulous? Yes. 
and I wear pajama bottoms because regular pants or skirts or dresses or just anything that is stylish is not very comfortable when you're laying in bed all day. So it is pajama bottoms. And yes, these actually also were free. <laughs> Let me tell you that story. I was on a trip with my parents many, 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 many years ago, and I got really sick. I got a bowel obstruction, and I was just puking all over the place. And I was like, "Oh, I can't, I can't wear, I can't wear my." Uh, I was wearing jeans, and I couldn't wear them because it just the the uh, button and everything was just bothering my abdomen. So my mom ran out to to the store and bought me pajama bottoms. So she bought me these. <laughs> I know, my life is all about free stuff. <laughs> so those are uh, those things that I'm gonna go wear. Let me go change. And no, I'm not gonna give you a video of me changing because that is just inappropriate. This is a G-rated program here and I might get a lot of views if I show you me changing, but mm, no, that's okay. We'll see in a little bit, let me go change. I have changed. Whoa! So exciting. Look. Don't I look not so pretty? I know my hair is a mess. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I actually don't brush my hair every day. I I have a lot of issues with muscle strength, muscle weakness, and this is just a lot to take care of. So I usually just let it be like this and you're like, "Wow, that is a really big mess." Mm, it is, you know, but I can just not so bad, right? I want to tell you a couple stories. So people will ring our doorbell and I sometimes am the only one to get it because either my dad's sleeping and he's in the backyard, whatever, or somebody's in the bathroom. You know, I'm the one to get the doorbell and I'm like, oh no, my hair, it's a mess. So I have on this chair right over here a towel and I actually use this because we have birds on our patio and I'm like, get off! Get off our patio! But I also use this because when I am trying to get to the door and I'm like, oh, my hair is a hot mess, I put it on and I'm like, I answer the door and I'm like, you know, pretend like I just got out of the shower. So I'm like, oh, oh excuse me, sir. I'm just, just, just got out of the shower. Another thing I do if I, if I can't find the towel or if I just don't have time to get around there, I have a hat and I have it right by the door. So I'll put it on and I'm like, oh, hello. <laughs> and if that all fails and if I'm just not by any of that stuff, I have a hood on this and I wear this shirt almost every day. So I sometimes I'm like, <laughs> like, oh, I'm so sorry. Just... I just woke up from a nap. Oh. Anyways, so I don't usually do my hair, but I should because it's a hot mess and I feel really like I need to do it because I'm filming a video and even though I filmed a lot of this with messy hair, yeah, I should probably do my hair. So what do I do? I don't do a whole lot because like I said, I have muscle weakness. So I just pull my hair back, <laughs> put a clip in, and then I always do my hair in a braid, so I just undo this, like this. Maybe do a couple brushes through with my, my hairbrush. Yeah, that looks decent, right? Okay, then we're just gonna rebraid it. <laughs> this is all I do. I'm so lazy and it is okay because that's what I am. <laughs> so here we go, we're just gonna braid it. Okay, when I get done, put hair behind my ears, twisty tie, thingy my jigger. Like that. Look, I did my hair. Not really, because it's still kind of a mess. But that's as good as it gets here because as soon as I go to bed, it's just going to be a mess again. <laughs> so that is how I do my hair. 
so exciting. Well, I'm going to drink my tea now and I just relax a little bit and then I'm going to go back to bed. I am done drinking my cup of tea. It was very delicious, but now I need to do a few other things. First of all, I need to start taking some of my supplements. The first one I take is levocarnitine. This helps because I have a carnitine deficiency. I do not like this liquid. It's rather disgusting. But the other option is to take pills, and I can't take these pills because they taste like fish, like really bad fish and I start burping them up and it's very uncomfortable. So I do not like the pills. So I deal with taking this liquid. The other thing I take is I start taking some B vitamins in the morning. I take two capsules of these. And then lastly, I also uh, take manganese. This is manganese, not magnesium, manganese. <laughs> and I make this, this this distinction because many people take magnesium, which is great. I also take that, but this manganese is really important. I found out that I have a manganese deficiency. For about a year, I was having severe anxiety. I was just going crazy. I thought I was going to die. I was having panic attacks. I thought, why am I going nuts? This is crazy, literally, <laughs> this is crazy. So I have blood work for my TPN. One of the things they test for is for manganese. And usually the test is kind of weird. It just says, yes, there is manganese in my blood, but it never gives us a value. The last time I had my blood work done, it actually gave us a value. The normal was supposed to be eight. Mine was five. So eight was normal. Mine was five. And I'm going, well, that's kind of low. So then I needed to start supplementing with manganese. An interesting thing happened. About three days after I started supplementing with manganese, my anxiety disappeared. Yes, it went away and I was like, hallelujah. So we found an answer to my severe manganese. And I also found out that manganese is stored in your mitochondria. So if this has any uh, implication with mitochondrial disease, I do not know. All I know is I had a manganese deficiency. I had severe anxiety. Now I take manganese and my anxiety is gone. I also went on a trip and when I came back, I had this in my suitcase and I kind of forgot to take it for a couple days. The anxiety came back. Oh, it was so bad. And then I was like, oh, take my manganese. And then about after three days of taking the manganese, the anxiety went right back away and I thought, well, we know for sure that is the manganese. So how do I take my supplements? First of all, I have to take 10 milliliters of this uh, carnitine solution and I just use a little syringe here. I fill this up with 10, 10 milligrams. Yeah, it's not easy to get this cap off. So there we go, 10 milliliters. And then I also grab two, two of these pills one of these pills and now I just take them all together because I don't know I don't like taking pills and I don't like this stuff so why not combine two things you don't like ah oh it's so disgusting oh okay that was the worst part of my my day so far is <laughs> making the carnitine next I make another tea. I have endo or, um, endometriosis, and with that, I get huge ovarian cysts. I had a major ovarian cyst a number of years ago. It ruptured, caused sepsis, organ failure. I almost died. It was not good. And then in 2022, I had another large ovarian cyst, and it was again causing a lot of issues. I had to have surgery for it, get it removed. Oh, it was a long recovery. Right after that, I had another ovarian cyst that started to develop. And even though I've been taking all sorts of supplements and remedies and herbs for many, many years, this uh, these ovarian cysts kept reoccurring. So finally, I read online that there is a magic potion, if you will. It is ginger, turmeric, cinnamon, uh, ground pepper, and you can add a sweetener if you want to make it sweeter because it's really bitter. 
and then you add hot water to dissolve it all and you make a tea and you are supposed to get rid of the ovarian cyst or at least they're supposed to stop growing. So in 2023 after, well, 2022, I had the ovarian cyst and then we had it removed and then I had another ovarian cyst in 2022 that ruptured. Thankfully it was only a small little cyst. Then after that I had another ovarian cyst and I was going, Oh, and it was this size again. And I was going, Oh no, that's too big. So I started taking this tea and thankfully that was 2023. That was like March of 2023 it stopped growing. I was like, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I do not like this tea. It's rather repulsive, but if that can avoid another ruptured ovarian cyst, another surgery for the ovarian cyst, I will drink it. And I just tell myself that every day and I hate it, I hate it, hate it, hate it. And you say, which one do you hate more? The carnitine or the tea? Mm, that is a good question because they both are disgusting. But it works and my ovarian cyst has stopped growing for the moment and I've gotten no more ovarian cysts since I started drinking this tea. So let me show you how I make the tea. To make the tea, I do the following. I add a half a teaspoon of turmeric. I put down a napkin here because turmeric can be very, uh, very staining. It can stain everything this bright yellow color. So I'm gonna put in a half a teaspoon of turmeric into the cup. Then I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of ginger. Here's ginger. Next, I add a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Then I add a little bit of black pepper, just a tiny little bit. That's more than enough. And then lastly, I put in a little bit of honey. I do this because it's rather bitter. So I just add in one little drop of honey to help take off the bitterness and make it a tiny bit sweet. So here we go, just a tiny little bit. And that's it. All right. That's how I make my tea. And then lastly, we add in hot water. Here we go. Mm -mm. Doesn't that look delicious? I let this cool off and then once it cools off, I will, will stir it with a, with a spoon and then I will slowly drink this throughout the day. I can't drink very much of it because it's very, very strong. But nonetheless, I will sip this throughout the day and then eventually by the end of the end of today, I will have drank the entire cup of this mixture of turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, black pepper, and honey. The next thing I do is set up my IV nutrition called TPN. If I was a normal person with a normal amount of energy, I would take the time to set everything up. I have to get lighting. I have to redo my camera configurations, but I'm really tired. I have mitochondrial disease and I also have blood clots right now. I have them in my legs and also in my lungs. And I'm really, really not feeling well and very short of breath. So if you don't mind, I'm going to switch you to a video that I shot previously, how I set up my IV nutrition called TPN. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you please forgive me because I just, I need to go to bed. So I'm gonna set up my IV nutrition while you watch that little video. And when we come back, I will have set it up and just like I set up in the video and then I'll show you how I connect it up. So here we go. This is how I, how I set up my IV nutrition called TPN. First, I tie my hair back. I do not want any hair in my face or around my medical equipment, so I make sure my hair is always out of my face. Next, I lay down towels. I try to make sure all my surfaces are covered with towels because TPN is very sticky. I do not want to get TPN anywhere except on the towels, which are very easy to throw into the wash. Also, the vitamins I'm going to be adding are yellow and orange, which make a mess if you spill them. It is very easy to throw a towel into the wash versus trying to clean up the floor or cabinets or your bedding. It is so much easier to use towels, so that's why I lay down towels before I begin. Next, I set up all my medical supplies. 
we're going to need alcohol swabs, syringes. I only need one syringe, but I always have at least two on hand just in case I drop one. Tubing, again, I always have two on hand just in case I drop one. Gonna have my multivitamins. I have my TPN, a TPN pull, which I'm gonna need when I prime the solution, and my TPN pump. So now that we have all these items, the first thing I usually do is wash my hands. Once I've washed my hands, next I add my multivitamin. When you look at your bag of TPN, there are gonna be three ports at the bottom. There's this port, which they're going to use at the pharmacy to infuse the TPN into the bag. There's gonna be this middle port, which you're gonna to use to spike the bag. And then there's gonna be this third port, which is where you're gonna infuse your multivitamin. Some bags have foil like this, and some bags actually have like a little clip, kind of like this one. My bag has the foil, so we'll undo the foil and get ready to infuse the multivitamin. Once we've gotten the foil off, we're gonna alcohol swab it. We're gonna clean, clean, clean it because it has all the sticky residue on it. So you're gonna clean and clean and clean it. Once I have this clean, I'm gonna carefully put this down, not getting anything on this terminal. All right, so that's set down. Next, we're gonna open up our multivitamins. These just have caps and you're just gonna Pop them off and pop them off. <laughs> and then we're gonna take some alcohol swabs and clean the top of these. You're just gonna clean, clean, clean. Now that one's done. Then I'm gonna open up another alcohol swab and clean the next one. And we clean, clean, clean. Okay, that one's done. Now when you put these down, you're very careful not to get anything on top of there. So I'm gonna carefully set that down. Next, I'm gonna open up my syringe. Once I get my syringe open, I always tighten this because this is the needle and I cannot tell you how many times this has not been tight and then when I try to get the vitamin out it squirts all over the place so I always make sure it's tight. Next I'm going to put five uh, milliliters of my one multivitamin so I'm going to pull back on the syringe and get five milliliters if you can see that right there five milliliters now I'm going to Carefully uh, take off this cap and this five milliliters is just air. We need to infuse air into the multivitamin So I'm going to put this carefully into the multivitamin Like that turn it upside down. I'm going to infuse the air and Then I'm going to carefully withdraw the multivitamin as you can see it's a nice orangey um, Substance and I got the five milliliters. So now I'm going to take this out carefully <laughs> and then I'm going to get another five milliliters of air into the into the syringe as so you can see another five milliliters and I'm going to take the other multivitamin and very carefully inject this like that and I'm going to infuse the air into this multivitamin now I'm going to very carefully extract five milliliters of this multivitamin And this second one's always more tricky because it has both multivitamins in. And there we go. I'm gonna carefully take that out. Now there's gonna be a little bit of air, so you're gonna kind of tap it a little bit and you're gonna push up just a little bit to get some of that air out. Now that I've gotten the air out, I'm going to take my bag of TPN. And again, we're gonna look for this port. And I'm always nervous that this might have gotten dirty. So again, I will carefully wipe this off. Now that I wipe this off, I'm going to carefully stab the bag of, and with this port, if you can see this. And put this in and infuse. And you can see it's going in and ooh, look at all that. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> and we're done. We got all the multivitamin in there. And now this is really the tricky part to get this out without stabbing yourself. <laughs>
Okay, now we have this, and now we're gonna carefully mix this back and forth, back and forth. You can do a little dance. <laughs> okay, I think that's pretty well mixed. So now that that's mixed, I'm gonna hang this up for the moment. And one thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you're gonna cap your needle. So let's cap the needle. And I'm not very good at this. And this is not the safest way to do this, but in order to get this on film, we have to do it that way. So once I cap this, then I have a sharps container. I'm gonna take the needle off and print the sharps container and dispose of the needle properly. So we're done with the multivitamin. That's the hardest part. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, next it's time for the tubing. Are you excited? I am. All right. So as I said, there were a couple ports here. So we've already used this port to get the multivitamin and the only port we have left is the middle one. And this one has a cap on the top and it's really hard to pop off. So I'm gonna try really hard not to make a mess here. So we're gonna pop this cap off. There we go. And I'm gonna carefully put this down, not getting this cap uh, contaminated because this is sterile. So I'm gonna carefully Carefully put this down. Next, I'm gonna open my package with my tubing. And now the package with the tubing, I do not open all the way, simply because I use this as a waste container. So I'm gonna take out the instructions, cause who needs those? And I'm just gonna take out just this first part of the tubing, and this is gonna be the part that we're gonna spike into the bag. So I'm gonna carefully take this off. Carefully get this up. All right, now I'm going to stab this very, very precisely and turn. Ah, we did it. Congratulations. Okay, now we're going to have to prime this. And this is really tricky because you want to get all of this air out of the tubing without making a mess. So here we go. I always keep this inside here. I'm gonna show you. <laughs> okay. Okay, now that we have that, I'm gonna carefully take this out and take out all this stuff. And here's the end of the tube and I'm gonna put the end of the tube into this baggie and here's the clamp. And so what we have to do is we have to get all this awful and this is a filter and there always gets there's always air in here so you always want to shake this up to get all the air out as you can see it should start priming i'm going to shake 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 and unfortunately i'm not going to be able to show this on camera because i can't be at the same height as this so I'm gonna let this prime. I have to go below the height of this, otherwise it won't prime. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's primed. Okay, so now all the tubing has the TPN in it. And to prevent this from leaking everywhere, we're going to clip the line. And if you can see, there's a um, solution in there. And this is just gonna be waste. But don't tip this upside down. The solution is really, really sticky. I just use this for my waist and we're just gonna keep that cap in there so it's nice and clean. Next, there is a clip on here. If you can see, there's this little twisty do. So this line is gonna be completely open until I undo this clip. There's a spring in here. Once it activates, it's gonna clamp down and it's gonna help prevent this from leaking. So here we go, we gotta twist it. Ah, it's off, just this little piece of plastic. Next, we're gonna put this into my pump. So here's my pump, I'm gonna lift to open. Voila, and this pump is really confusing because it seems backwards to me. So you're gonna put this blue tab in this side here, this little knob, and there's this little port to put the the tubing in and now be very careful because this loves to slam shut on your fingers. Painful, painful, painful. Okay, and then we're gonna put this uh, like this so the big portion is down and it's gonna just hug in there. 
And then we're gonna very carefully, without getting your fingers, push down, and it's in. So that's how I set up my TPN. That is how I set up my IV Nutrition called TPN. In this video, it's a little bit different. I do not have a clamp to clamp my my pump right here. I don't have anything to clamp it onto the IV pole. So the only thing I've been provided is this backpack. I put my IV Nutrition in here. I put the pump right here, and then I just put the backpack over my IV pole. And it makes it a lot easier because if I need to go someplace, I can just grab this backpack and it is already in there and I don't have to worry about disconnecting my pump from the IV pole and all that jazz. So this is how I do it. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I need to connect the IV line to my pick line. My pick line's underneath here, so let me get this out for you. Okay. So here's my pick line. I have these extensions on here. Let me show you. So here are these extensions. This is the pick line down here. And you say, why do we have these extensions? Because if I was trying to connect the IV down here, my arm does not reach. So we put these extensions on and now look, I can reach. So I'm just gonna grab one line here, this one. I'm just gonna put this other line back underneath here so I do not rip out my pick line. I've done many things in my life and ripping out a pick line so far is not on my skill set, and I wanna keep it that way. I partially ripped out a line a couple years ago, but thankfully it was in enough that I could keep it. Um, but since then, I've been very, very careful. I try to never Never do anything to possibly rip out this pick line because then I have to go to the emergency department and spend the day in the emergency department. Mm, no, no thanks. So the next thing I need to do is I need to unclamp this line right here. So now the line is open and I can infuse things into it. This is an alcohol cap. Um, I know most people say like the alcohol cap keeps it clean and since there's alcohol, you don't need to disinfect it. I'm gonna tell you I do disinfect it because I am a germ freak, so. I always use alcohol wipes. The other thing I need to do is flush the line with saline. So I'm gonna open this up, break the airlock, just twist the cap, pull down, push up, and then screw back on the cap when the air is out. Next, I'm gonna open the alcohol wipe, take off my cap, okay. And I'm gonna wipe this and wipe this and wipe this. La 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 la. Okay, wiping, wiping, wiping. Now after this, I'm not going to talk because I did get spit, spit, yes, I almost didn't say that right. Spit on the end of this line, it caused sepsis. It wasn't good. I had to get a different pick line. Hmm, don't recommend it. So as soon as I'm gonna take this off, I'm gonna connect uh, the saline flush, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm so tired. Saline flush to this, but I'm not gonna talk because I don't wanna get spit. So let me quick wipe this off and shut up. Okay, it's on. Next, you're gonna flush it. Oh. All right. Yeah, muscle weakness, so it hurts to do this. But you do what you can, so it's it's done. Now I need to take off this blue cap over here and connect it here. And again, I'm not gonna talk because I don't wanna get spit on anything and get infection. So just watch and pretend like there's narrative. Here we go.
once this is connected, I'm gonna quick wipe this off because there is TPN there and it's sticky and it gets over all over stuff. So I just wipe it off with this alcohol wipe. Lastly, I unclip this so the line is open, wrap this around twice, put this underneath my sweatshirt. Why do I do that? To prevent the pick line from getting caught on something, possibly falling out and avoiding mishaps. Anyways, onward. Here's my pump. I'm gonna turn it on. It's gonna beep, 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 beep. Isn't this fun? Hmm. So it starts up. All right, good news, it works. <laughs> okay, the next thing I'm going to do is it just asks me some questions. It says program, I hit yes. It says, do you wanna repeat the program? I say, of course I do because that's what I wanna do. And it says, do you wanna confirm that? And I say, yes, yes. So now it's going through the whole program to make sure it's set up correctly. And then once it gets all the way down to the end, right now, all right, it says run and I say, yes, run it. It is starting up and that is how I connect up my TPN. I'm really tired, so I'm going to go to bed. I'm gonna rest because that's what I need to do. All right, we'll see you later, bye. Hello, I've made it back to bed. About this time of the day, my blood clots start to really, really bother me. Since June, I've had blood clots in my legs and they break off and go to my lungs. Right now, I'm pretty sure I have blood clots in my lungs because I've been very short of breath. I have not been feeling well. I've had doctor's appointments and I've tried to get medical treatment for it, but it's really difficult. I did not realize how difficult it was to get blood clot treatment, but it is because most of my doctors say, oh, you need blood thinners. Blood thinners cause bleeding. I say, well, okay, but I got blood clots and they actually <clears throat> prefer that I have blood clots than possibly have bleeding. I don't know. I don't really understand, but nonetheless, it's been a a number of weeks, number of months, and the blood clots have been quite severe. So whenever I get up and do things, as I sit up and blood drains to my, my legs, it causes a lot of pain and pressure on my legs and on the blood clots. And then some of the blood clots eventually break off and go to my lungs. It makes me very short of breath, very dizzy and extremely tired. So I'm going to spend basically the rest of the day in bed here. I'm going to lay down. I'm going to get flat because I have a terrible headache. And laying completely flat helps me get rid of the headache. I'm going to check some social media, get back to people, get back to Facebook comments, YouTube comments, Instagram, everything as much as I can. I'm gonna take a nap and hopefully after laying here and resting, my breathing hopefully will calm down. So I'm gonna sign off and I need to inflate my cough so, so I can get full ventilatory support from my, from my ventilator. So I'm gonna see you later, bye-bye. Hello, it's been a number of hours and I'm very happy my breathing has slowed down. It's getting, getting late in the day for me. It's about seven o'clock. It's time for me to get up. I need to take the rest of my supplements. My IV nutrition called TPN is nearly finished. So once that is finished, I need to get disconnected. And then I need to change in to my pajamas and start getting ready for bed. I start getting ready for bed about eight o'clock. 
So let's get up. Let's get going to finish my day. These are all the herbs and supplements and vitamins that I take every day. There are 30 bottles out here on the table. There is also one bottle that I take that I keep in the refrigerator, so that is not here. Um, in addition, I also take two of some of the supplements. So in total, every evening, I take 35 pills, and that does not include any prescription medicines, which I do take a couple prescription medicines, and I take those throughout the day. And it also does not include any supplements I took in the morning, so it is quite a lot to take at night. However, I am very thankful and grateful. A lot of these supplements have tremendously helped with my medical conditions. They include severe pancreas issues, liver disease, kidney issues, allergies, I don't even know what else, muscle weakness, energy production. There are just a lot of different things here that I take. So this is just what my evening looks like. Lots and lots of bottles and also lots and lots of things to keep track of and to remember to order them and to remember that I have enough of everything and oh, it is, it is quite a feat to keep up with all these bottles. After I take my supplements, it is usually time to disconnect my TPN here. The machine was beeping. I already turned it off. The next thing I need to do is I need to clamp this line right here. It has a little, I don't know, what is that called? A doohiggy. So I'm going to clamp my line. It doesn't matter, the pump is already off, but as soon as I disconnect this, there's a possibility this could continue to leak and it might leak sticky TPN all over the place and you don't want that. So next thing I'm going to do is get my arm out. <sighs> going to oh, free my arm from this entanglement. So here we go, it's all ready to go. I'm gonna be using a couple things, saline, heparin, alcohol wipe and alcohol cap. There we go. See? Ooh. I'm going to quickly set this up. So open, twist, pull down, don't break the airlock, push up, twist the cap. Same thing with the heparin. Open, uncap, pull down, push up, and cap. Now I'm going to rip open the alcohol wipe. And next, I'm going to undetach. That would be the word, not untach. Untach is not a word. Detach, that's what I'm gonna do. Unscrew, detach. Here we go. Now, I did not talk during that, so I did not get, actually, I don't care about this anymore. I just care about this, not to get this contaminated. You might have seen that I actually wiped this off with an alcohol swab and then wiped this off with an alcohol swab. I did that because this has TPN on the end, and if you don't, there's some uh, residue that can get things sticky. And then I also take the cap from this and put it on there, and now it won't leak. But I still just wipe this off because there is still residue around here, and... I don't like sticky residue. I've had so much of this leak on the floor and I think, oh, that's disgusting. And then if you have an ant problem, I'm not saying we have a bug infestation, but we do have ants that love sticky stuff and we won't have any ants and then you get something sticky and then boop, 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 there come the ants. Oh, so exciting. And then you have to quickly clean it up and get rid of the ants. But we're not talking about ants right now. We're talking about Flushing my line with saline. See, look, woo, saline flush. Once I get this through, and again, it really aggravates my, my muscle weakness to do this, I'm going to connect up the heparin. Now 
and I infuse the heparin. That takes a lot of energy. Ooh, yeah. Then I'm going to put the cap on, but I'm going to wipe this off because there gets to be heparin on the top of this. And again, I just don't like messes. All right, I'll call cap is on. There we go. Maybe. It's not on straight. Oh, there it is. Look, it's beautiful. Then I'm going to clamp the line. You see, click. And then I'm going to wrap this back through. And all this really does is keep these from being all over the place. They sometimes have this cloth that you put over. But I don't like the cloth because it gets sticky and itchy and I just prefer this. And then I wash these bandages and then reuse it. See now it's all connected and these don't get stuck. Put my arm back in my sleeve. There we go. Now my TPN is all disconnected. The next thing I do now as I'm getting ready to go to bed is I go back to my room and I'm going to fill my water chamber on my heated humidifier. My heated humidifier has a water chamber on top of it and you have to put water in and uh, as you use the heated humidifier it, it takes the water and it, it puts it into the air and so that water level goes down, down, down and once it runs all the way down to the bottom it is dry and you do, want, do not want dry air. Dry air is very hard on your lungs and you will wake up. Maybe you won't, but someone using a ventilator with a tracheostomy tube, such as me, I wake up. I wake up during the night whenever my chamber runs low. So I always try to fill it pretty close to going to bed. I fill it all the way up and usually I can get through the night with the water chamber being completely full. So let's go back to my bedroom and I'll show you how I fill up the water chamber on my heated humidifier. The first thing I do when filling my water chamber is I take off the cap to a bottle of distilled water. Next, I start at the ventilator and follow the air hose all the way down to the water chamber. I disconnect the air hose, which is attached to the ventilator. I then place a funnel on top of the water chamber. I carefully fill the water chamber with water and I fill it all the way up to the line. Once it is filled all the way to the line, I take off the funnel and then I reattach the air hose back to the water chamber. And lastly, I put back on the cap to the bottle of distilled water. And that is how I fill the water chamber on my heated humidifier. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is run my nebulizer again. So again, I'm going to take off the top. I'm going to put five milliliters of saline into this container. There we go. Put this top back on. Connect it back. There we go. Now I'm going to turn on the nebulizer. And I'm going to allow this to run for about a half an hour. So I'm going to inflate the cup of my tracheostomy tube and we will see you later. Bye. Okay, the nebulizer is... <clears throat> excuse me. The nebulizer is done running. I'm going to switch off the nebulizer and then disconnect the nebulizer. Now my airways are all hydrated for the night. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go put on my pajamas and then head to the bathroom and brush my teeth. I am not going to show you me undressing. And due to the fiasco this morning with me getting toothpaste all over my computer, we'll just imagine that I brush my teeth again. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. I have changed into my pajamas. I brushed my teeth. I took out my, my barrettes and I took out my twisty tie at the end here, my little hair tie. So I am ready to go to sleep. 
I am extremely exhausted and am looking forward to sleepy time. This week is Mitochondrial Disease Awareness Week. It began on Monday and today on Sunday is the very last day. I did this video in honor of Mitochondrial Disease Awareness Week. I hope you found it informational, educational, and a little bit of fun. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. And I am going to bed. I'm going to put my mouth splint in. I'm going to inflate my cuff and good night. We will see you next week. Bye.